This is Etiquette by Random House, and it's a woman's, like, society that made this book, mind you, because this is honestly my favorite part of all this. And it was, a uh, factioned out through the Congress. And general Americans admire the kind of manners in men which are so natural that there is no feelings of artifice or design. To achieve this ease of manners takes considerable practice. I can definitely affirm of that. I am constantly trying to work on my etiquette. Your manners should be as automatic as breath. Breathing so that you don't consciously have to stop and consider the required action as each occasion arises. I mean, I agree to this, but it's stating, like, you know, you have to go through some of it to be able to fix your manners. So, I mean, to an extent, like, trust me, I've, I'm not, I love comedy, I'm a very comedic person, and I can affirm that it makes some very awkward situations. Men's manners towards women. The whole code of manners, 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 sorry, towards a woman is based on the assumption that she belongs to a weaker sex with frailer muscles and more delicate sensibilities. That's right, ladies. To what extent this is true is a matter for sociologists. Psycho, yeah, psycho. It's supposed to say sociologist, but we don't spell it that way anymore. And psychologist, the men who wants to have good manners should refrain from trying to prove that a woman can open a heavy door just as efficient efficiently as he can. Men traditionally accord women certain marks of respect. Marks of respect, meaning you give them, like, they're just due when they sh prove that they have their worth. I mean, that's the basis of how I can state it. And though the disappearance of hobby Hubble skirts, Hubble skirts, my bad, and breath-defying corsets has obliterated the reasons for some of these courtesies. The courtesies are still accepted as part of the code of a gentleman. I mean, I, I agree with that. Like, for real, one of the best times, like, definitely made my day. I hold the door open for the an old lady at the library. And she's like, well, look at that. You even bowed a little. And I was like, yes, ma'am. Chivalry is not dead. It's getting there, but it's not dead yet. I mean, I like I said, I walk the gentleman's walk, which means if you are older, you always take the curbside. That way, so you get here first. Totally get that. Everybody should walk that way. Shout out to my Zach Weenie. <laughs> Whiny, however you pronounce it. Sorry, bub. Talking about women. A well-mannered man does not talk about his conquest. He does not, in fact, say anything about a woman which would give others a questionable opinion of her integrity or morals. Most men automatically accord this courtesy to their wives or sweethearts, but they may be less respectful about a woman whose relationship with them is more casual. Locker room bull sessions about women are poor manners. Locker room bowl sessions. Meaning like, you know, dudes in the locker room taking turns about the hottest chick they've banged. I mean, I've I've never commented myself. Besides just some intricate facts, even while in prison or in jail, at the Cass County Jail, mind you. That is where I live, Cass County, Indiana. Um, and yeah. Unnecessary touching. Unnecessary touching. Let me get that one good. There we go. A well-mannered man avoids touching a woman unnecessarily. In helping a lady down from a bus or over an icy sidewalk, a certain amount of touching is necessary. 
but in ordinary conversations. Patting, pating, pa patting, yeah, patting on the shoulder or squeezing the arm is wholly unnecessary. Holy with a W. <laughs> holy, woolly, woolly. It's a woolly mammoth, guys. Oh my gosh. Ah! Word of the day, woolly with the W H O L Y, which is somehow holy. Ah! <laughs> In reference to Pee Wee, by the way, the line between friendliness and pawing is a very fine one. Making a woman conspicuous. A well-mannered man does nothing to make a woman conspicuous in public. He doesn't talk loudly or intimidate, intimidately, intimately with her, or intimately, my bad, or call her name aloud across a lobby. If you want to hail a friend across the street, cross and catch up with her so you can do so without announcing her name to the whole block. Walking with a woman. In general, a man walks on the curb, which once again, I fully agree on that. It's actually something I get in an argument with my son about quite frequently because like, I don't know, I guess that's the way a, he finds out if I think he's a man or not. You know what I mean? Because I take the curb. If he starts walking closer to the curb, I just look at him. I'm like, you think you ready for that? And he just, nah. Then on the other side, buddy. <laughs> you know, the one time I don't say nothing, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure he'll buck up eventually, given he'll probably be way bigger than me. But, you know, you cross that path when you get there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, kind of takes the curb side of the street although this is no longer a rigid rule nor is it necessary to shift constantly back and forth but it is and walking with two women a man should keep to the curbside to avoid turning his back on one while talking to the other a man always opens a door for a woman and holds it for her to go through in case of a revolving door he starts it off with a push and then lets her precede him. A man carries packages or suitcases for a woman. An officer in uniform is not supposed to carry packages, but this isn't very st strictly observed. So in other words, officers aren't supposed to, but they can totally carry this stuff with their sweetheart. Like, that makes sense, right? We can all... We're all human. They're not cops all the time. They're not supposed to be anyways. Right? A man holds an umbrella over both the woman and himself. A man does not offer his arm to a lady in the daytime unless she is very old or the ground is very slippery or in crossing a busy street. He may, however, offer his arm when walking at night. There is no need to clutch a woman's elbow going up and down curbs unless there is a lot of water in the gutter or some other difficulty. And I mean, I can't agree with that. You shouldn't grab their elbow. It should be elbow locked. Or if anything, fireman carrier. I mean, for real. Let's get let's get real, guys. Let's bring chivalry back. You know what I mean? Don't let her step in the pond. Unless she wants to. You know, dancing naked in the rain's cool too. <laughs> Please don't take me off for saying that. <laughs> For the love of goodness. If it is necessary to go single file down a theater aisle or in a train, for example, the man lets the woman go first unless there is some reason for him to lead the way, such as having to open heavy train doors. In the out of conveyances... In and out of conveyances. Hey, look, the word conveyances. I just asked for one of those so I can go see the therapist that they're trying to make me. Well, they're making me go see. I don't have a vehicle, and it's like, if you want me to go talk to this guy, which I personally would love to talk to this man, you're going to have to provide me with one of those conveyance thingies. A conveyance of depth is how I pronounce it, actually. 
And man is always last in and usually first out of the conveyance to be specific buses and trains. A man lets a woman precede him going into a bus, but steps down from the bus first so that he can then turn and offer his hand to help the woman down. This applies to trains too. If the step down is a step one, taxis. A man follows it. Taxis. Wow, that was bad. A man follows it. I need something to drink. A woman's getting into a taxi off after opening the door for her, but gets out first, holding up the jump. Okay, guys, I gotta stop because it's getting about 15 minutes, and they'll cut me off and not let me put it on YouTube. But that's etiquette, gentlemen. Young gents and ladies. Like I said, it's actually Random House, which is a Congress book. And yeah, it's factioned and made from uh, I don't know, Library of Congress catalog card number 56-8841 I went to the library and they were like no we ain't got nothing on this dude the uh, author this book is old I, I, I ran through it real fast though and I'm not lying I loved it <laughs> the old man god rest his soul rich Richard or Rick as I call him now reference <laughs> him ass gave it to me and yeah I just <laughs> and he's like you're the only person I've ever seen run through an etiquette book so excited <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, guys. Our 99 sweet dreams. Son, I miss you a lot. I hope you find yourself and it gets easier and you come see me.